Second Life is, at least initially when people get into it, is if you think about what it actually looks like, given that people can build anything they want, what do they build? What they dream about. So initially, it's the sum of all our dreams. Second Life is the average of all human dreams. And guess what the average of all human dreams is? Malibu. <laughs> Thanks to television, in some sense. The average of all human dreams is basically a sort of a Frank Lloyd Wright cantilevered house hanging out over a dock with palm trees blowing in the wind and a beautiful sunset in Malibu. And, you know, I, I could say the same things about avatars, right? I mean, basically, think about it. We, we, we build first what we, what we most dream about in the real world. But the thing that's so cool about Second Life is then we go beyond that. I mean, once you're done with the, 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 the dock and the yacht and everything, you kind of, and you get up on it, and you sit there, and you got your, you know, your, your martini glass in your hand and stuff. You, you, you intellectually kind of start to wonder, well, what else is there for me to be interested in and do here? So I think that what's happening is simply that the virtual world uh, re recreates the real world because the things of value, the things that we so value as humans are things we find in the real world initially. And then we start to repurpose them and modify them um, uh, you know, and create new things. <laughs> it says he comes from advertising. I, actually, I don't. Um, I don't have an advertising background. This is, this is Philip, the founder you may be referring to. Mark, our new CEO, who also really doesn't come from advertising. But so Rob. I have another question here. Um, when will we see the Linden dollar expand, expand beyond Second Life to other grids, or will we be left at the mercy of unsavoring banking schemes? This is from <laughs> Dirk Talamasco. Yeah. Hi, Dirk. Thank you for the question. Um, uh, that's a, a person who, who had lots running around. Uh, the, uh, our hope is that the Linden dollar can be a usable currency across multiple virtual worlds. Um, our, our, uh, it's our hope as a, as a business as well. Uh, part of our belief is that the system needs to be profoundly open and it needs to grow in, in, in ways very similar to the web. And that we have to build a business model that's durable as a company to that kind of openness and growth. And one of the ways that we would I think see ourselves as being able to make a, a fair amount of money in the future, and I mean fair in the in a way that's fair to, to users as well, um, is to manage the the virtual currency systems. And I think there's a tremendous need for microcurrencies uh, worldwide. I don't think that uh, uh, I think PayPal made a big difference, but I don't think it's global and ubiquitous in the way that it could be. And I think that uh, microcurrencies are going to be an incredibly imp yeah. Not all countries can use PayPal. Reading from Ian Wells. Uh, I, I think that uh, we need a global uh, currency. Uh, particularly if we believe that there's people need to get paid for their work and we need to have very efficient ways to do that. And I think that's one of the things we can really uh, drive as a company. So, um, so yeah, I think that's going to happen. Along, along the same line, um, Valiant Westland asks, with the high percentage of so Second Life users being in non-English speaking regions of real life, when will Second Life offer built-in robust chat translation? <laughs> That's a great question. So, th yeah, when, when will we have a robust uh, chat translation? There's tremendous progress being made now in, in effective uh, phrase-level machine translation. You know, uh, single-sentence translators are fairly frequent uh, popular now in Second Life. Whether we'll adopt one and build it into the client UI, I think, would be a function of whether there's a really great one out there and also our own sort of level of, of how busy we are. I would like, though, uh, let me just say from my perspective as an important designer in Second Life, um, I do think that some form of generalized language translation would be highly utilitarian now uh, to be included in the basic Second Life product. I, don't, I can't tell you that I've got a plan. We, we don't have a working prototype of that internally yet, but I would say that that's the kind of direction that we'll move in. That said, we would do that in a way that um, it, it may be that we need to build something that enables the translation tools being built by Second Life residents to be used effectively in that architecture because I think that with, with almost everything else in Second Life, there's more aggressive work being done by a larger group of people than us as a company. And so we're not going to, uh, you know, I say this with a lot of things, we're not, we're not going to do it in a way that devalues that or, you know, makes it three people at Linden versus 100 very smart people working on language translation in world. But I think it's something, language translation is something that has a huge opportunity to bring people together. We should only take like one more question. We're just about out of time, I know. Um, oh, Glenn? Okay. Um, my main question is um, when can we expect Linden Labs to support IP rights 
of content creators on a more active level. Are you referring to uh, like texture copying or? Texture copying, um, design copying. Not, <laughs> I'm not talking about a chair as a chair. Yeah. So if one person makes a chair and another person makes a chair, it's just a chair. But textures, um, original ideas. Right. So this is this fascinating challenge for those who don't follow this 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 discussion. I can elaborate a bit. You know, uh, as is, as is the case in all digital domains, there's a copyability to things in the virtual world that things in the real world don't have. Now, if you build content that has scripted objects in it, interactive capabilities, it's generally relatively easy to protect those against copying. However, if you build something that's a static object like a chair sitting in the virtual world, and this is what you're referring to. Um, it is possible to uh, make a copy of it and then to re-upload that copy. Um, there's a bunch of stuff that we're, I mean, fundamentally, we believe that, one, it's a hard problem because there's always a way to copy things. Uh, and stopping people from copying things really isn't pragmatically very possible. But providing better uh, in-world systems to allow people to manage disputes and manage rights is definitely something that we're thinking a lot about. So there's areas like um, better, uh, you know, better, time stamping and marking on content when it's created, you know, so that you can more easily see. And I know that's one of the things that we have been talking about and internally and we will do. Hmm? And the UUIDs. Yeah, well, the, uh, when an object is uploaded into Second Life today, there's not, I we, we could put more information into the upload so that people using the object could go back and see who made it, when it was made, maybe where it was uploaded, whatever, so that you can establish a track, uh, a trace history between, say, comparable objects, and then it will allow for better in-world disputes. Uh, we support the DMCA process today, which is what the United States requires of online content, online services in general, that, that if you make a copyright claim against someone else, so pragmatically for those who are here, say, representing institutions, um, protecting copyright at an institutional level is fairly straightforward because you can, you can present a real, you know, you have a legal team, you have copyrights and trademarks, and those can be fairly easily uh, enforced and respected in world. The problem, of course, is that the virtual world has so much content in it now and so many brilliant people creating content that we do need to come up with better in-world systems to, um, to allow them to resolve, you know, uh, do better dispute resolution, better arbitration resolution, and support their businesses. May I make a suggestion? Sure. That Linden Labs works with um, Content Creators Association and Virtual Intellectual Property Organization. That's um, great. We've, we basically <laughs> were in collaboration. Right. So if, if Linden Labs wants to jump in anytime. <laughs> Content Creation Association being an actual? Yeah. That's an Content, actual one. Content Creators Association. Great. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Let me uh, wrap up and say thank you. I hope, I hope this has been helpful. And again, I, I just can't tell you how excited I am to, to be here. And and see what's been built here at the tech. So thanks to you guys.